Have you ever wanted to create cybernetic sci-fi sounds? Or make electronic music? But where do we begin? What can we use? One way to do this is to use visual programming language. There are many programming languages out there, both visual and text-based, that you can use to sound design and produce electronic music. Text-based programming is more of the traditional and common ways to program. One of the most popular sound programming language is SuperCollider. But you may feel that text-based programming seems a bit scary to get into. I know I was pretty intimidated when I took a programming 101 class. Visual programming, on the other hand, may be a more intuitive and less scary option. But what even is visual programming language? With visual programming language, we use graphical elements to program rather than using text exclusively. In short, we connect boxes together via virtual cables and make some noise. There are countless professional musicians, sound designers, and multimedia artists who use visual programming language to create compelling art. In this video, we'll focus on Pure Data and MaxMSP. We're gonna go through an overview of MaxMSP by the company Cycling74. And we'll also take a look at Pure Data and compare the two. After we look at the pros and cons of each, we'll decide which visual programming language that we use for the next several videos on this channel. Let's start looking at MaxMSP. All right, so MaxMSP, it is a beast. There are a bunch of musicians who use it. Atmospheric ambient maestros like Tim Hecker and Finesse use Max to create a wall of lush and beautiful soundscape. Holly Herndon uses Max to create genre-defying electronic music that bends the listener's mind. Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead is known to be a Max user as well. On top of being an amazing tool for sound design and electronic music production, we can use Jitter, which is part of Max, to create mesmerizing visuals. We can also use Max to do multimedia interactive projects. And if you use Ableton, there is Max for Live, which we can use to create custom MIDI effects, audio effects, and synth. And there are a bunch of Max for Live objects made by very talented people that we can freely download or purchase for a low fee. Speaking of money, what's the price? For a permanent license, it is $3.99 as of right now. If a new version like Max 9 eventually comes out, you can upgrade by paying around $149. There's also Max 8 Crossgrade for Ableton Live Suit, which costs $199. There are options to pay $9.99 monthly or with a $99 annual subscription. If you're a student, you can get an academic discount price, which is $250. So it is pretty expensive, but after you get the hang of it, you can create pretty much any sounds you imagine, and it's great for multimedia projects as well. But what if you don't really need to do live visuals, or that you use DAW that is not Ableton? Well, let's take a look at Pure Data. Okay, so right off the bat, one of the best things about Pure Data, or PD for short, is that it's absolutely free. It is open source. Another benefit over Max is that Pure Data is great for embedded audio. What that means is that we can program a synth or audio effect in Pure Data, put the code into a hardware platform, and we now have a standalone hardware synth or a Stompbox styled effect. No laptops needed. Stuff like Bella or recently Daisy use Pure Data. Of course, Max MSP Gen can be used for embedded audio, but as of right now, at the time of writing this script, PD is more common for this application. How different is it from Max? Well, they're both examples of data flow programming language. We can use both to sound design and make electronic music. And they both have great community. I think the biggest difference is that PD is free. There are a bunch of differences between the two, but in terms of focusing only on sound design and electronic music composition, PD is more than enough for a beginner. Also, there are several products out there like Organel, in which we can put custom PD codes on it. So, if you want to get into this amazing world of sound design and electronic music, but don't want to spend money just yet, PD is a fantastic choice. Because I want to keep the cost affordable for everyone, we'll be using Pure Data for the next several videos. 
Also, I want to cover embedded audio either way, so it will be more efficient to focus on one language at a time. Though, I do eventually want to do videos on Maximus P. It is way too amazing to be ignored. Because they're so similar to each other, learning Max will be much easier if we already know PD. There is a 30-day free trial, so if you're interested in learning Max through this channel, please do wait until I post my first Max video. I'm thinking about dedicating a whole month on Max tutorials to leverage the free trial. And if you find yourself falling in love with it, then you can consider purchasing it. But if you feel that PD is enough, then you can continue using it. I hope this video was helpful in learning about Max and PD. And I also hope that it helped you choose between the two. The next video will be an introduction to pure data. And following that, we'll go through synthesis basics. We're going to start doing hands-on activities very soon. See you in the next class and stay safe as always. For your homework, until the next video comes out, please do go around looking at projects that use Max or Pure Data. I recommend following Cycling74 on social media and also taking a look at their website where they post user projects and interviews. YouTube is a great place to find Max or Pure Data projects. And on Instagram, I recently saw somebody making a Pure Data patch that emulated Soma Labs Lyra 8 signal flow and sound. Look at this thing, it's wild. Their Insta handle is at Mike Moreno DSP. Go out there and get yourself excited to learn about visual programming language. <laughs>